evening, everyone, once again. Certainly glad each of you are online with us. And I'm thankful to have this opportunity to speak to you this evening. I would like for us to study briefly one verse found in 2 Timothy chapter 1, and that is verse 13. We find in this verse uh, a command given from Paul to the young preacher Timothy. That verse reads as follows. Again, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13. It says, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. There are different translations, obviously, and each one of them gives us a different perspective on this verse. Uh, there's four that I would like to call your attention to. The American Standard Version says to hold the pattern of sound words. The English Standard Version says follow the pattern of the sound words. The New American Standard Version says retain the standard of sound words. And the New King James Version says hold fast the pattern of sound words. So you can very easily see the idea that is trying to be conveyed here to us. Paul gives the command to Timothy and us by extension to hold fast the form, to follow the pattern, or to retain the standard. But just what are we to retain? Well, that would be sound words. How are we to know that which is sound? Well, Paul says, that which you've heard of me. But then what must be done to obey such a command? I'd like for us to explore these ideas at this time. To hold fast the form of sound words requires each and every person to have a certain attitude. We can point to five Old Testament examples to see the right type of attitude which we must possess. First is found in 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 14. And this is Micaiah. It says there, and Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. And then Joshua, we're all familiar with this verse, Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or of the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Third, Job. Job chapter 13, verses 13 through 15, which reads as follows. Hold your peace. Let me alone that I may speak and let come on me what will. Wherefore do I take my flesh in my teeth and put my life in my hand? Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. The idea there is, is wherever the chips are going to fall, I will obey and do what God says. Our fourth example comes from Daniel chapter 3, verse 18, where we have the three Hebrew children here responding to Nebuchadnezzar's giant figure that was made. It says in verse 18, But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. And then Ezra. In Ezra chapter 7, verse 10, says, Therefore Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord, and to do it, and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. In each of these individuals, there was exhibited a certain attitude which is needed in order to obey the command and to hold to the pattern of sound words. Setting God as one's highest priority in their life and following after him, regardless of the consequences. This is the godly attitude which one must possess. Secondly, what are these sound words? Sound words are those which are safe or wholesome, 
they're healthy, they're uncorrupted or true, they are reliable, you can depend on them. We must note that these are not words given by mankind. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, points to that being the ways of death. We note from Habakkuk uh, chapter 2, verse 20, that all the earth is expected to keep silent. The idea would be to listen to God when he speaks. And if this is all the case, then sound words must come from some person, some being higher than mankind. Jesus said that we are expected to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. And then we note from Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 2, the writer there pens that God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past under the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. So sound words then come from God. And we've seen this throughout the entirety of mankind's history. The last two verses, which we just read, point to that. He spoke through the fathers by the prophets. But now in these times, our times, since the first century, God has chosen to speak through his son by his son. We know that written word as the New Testament, and it is meant to be our authority in matters pertaining to life and religion. Third, what about the word spoken of by Paul? As we've noted, sound words, healthy words, reliable words come from God. Well, these words were also given to the apostles. Mark chapter 13, verse, verse 11. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. So the apostles of Christ would be given exactly what they needed to say in the right moment. We note that Christ gave them sound words himself. John chapter 17, verse 8. He says, Therefore I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. And then we see also that even though Paul was not a member of the original 12 apostles, he himself was an apostle. And he learned what he knew from Christ himself. Galatians chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. He says there, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. These sound words are expected then to be taught to others. This becomes then a continuously taught body of doctrine, and it is expected to be taught to each successive generation. Jesus prayed for such in John 17, verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but also for them which shall believe on me through their word. This comes directly to us today. So then what type of attitude do you have toward the word of God? Without the proper attitude, we will not ever seek it out. Without the proper attitude, we will not read it, nor will we study it as we should, as we're expected to by God. But then what do we do once we do read it and we study it? Do we obey those sound words? Jesus promises us abundant life. John chapter 10, verse 10, he says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that, ye, that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. We must cling to sound words as if our lives depend upon it. Because in reality, our life does depend on it. 
not just physically, but more importantly, our spiritual life. This is not, the, the reward of heaven is not possible without our obedience to God's true and reliable words. So we must make sure that we hold fast the pattern or the form of sound words. Thank you for your kind attention.